he didn't know. <sighs> What's up, y'all? Hey, guys. My wife and I. Oh, we're gonna hang out with y'all again, yeah. married people. This is the marriage hangout. Marriage hangout. Can I bring this up closer? Yeah. So maybe I can put my phone on here. Yeah. This is a marriage hangout. <clears throat> and hopefully no more trolls. Like, why? Why it's don't... Crazy, right? I gotta put my um, my charger on because my phone's about to die. Marcus. No, I, I have a charge. I just can't oh. sit it down. Looks like you want to unplug it and just stick this in. Because if I stick it, it's going to be the same problem. You see what I'm saying? I'm saying I can't. But you're moving this closer and closer, I feel like, for this. But I'm saying you don't have to do that if you just use this. But it ain't gonna work. Just try it. Wait, are you shaking your head at me? I is. This Ooh. is a marriage session. We're supposed to pretend like we're happy all the time. Oh my goodness, false. yeah. False. Somebody said it's a marriage. Do I need to stay? You stay if you want to. You grown. Yeah. If you're single. You, you are grown. You Let know me tell what? You if something. you're single, you should stay. You are grown. Because you can do whatever you want to do. There's things that I wish I would have known you are when I grown. was single. You tell people. Say, I'm grown. So I'm not in the picture. You can't tell me. Words. You're in mine. You're in my picture right here. Baby. Okay. It's more of you than it is me. Okay. Hey, guys. Oh my guys. gosh. Oh my gosh. Hello. Your lighting is better than mine. Look how dark mine is compared to yours. No. It's not a black light skin thing. It's just a black thing. Wait, what? <laughs> You're so random. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You guys are so sweet. Okay, so this one is all about our married couple. So if you have questions about marriage, um, if you're single, you have questions about marriage, um, feel free to just jump in and we're going to hang out with you guys for about 30, 20, 30 minutes. And before we get started, where's our books? <gasps> My new book came out today. Are you guys so excited? Silent Seasons, Trusting God When You Don't Understand. Whoop. And then what's the name of your book, Papa Bear? When God's Hand is on You, Understanding and Walking Out the Call of God on Your Life. You, you can get them on Amazon, Kindle, um, Audible Books, and all that other good stuff. Okay. Yeah, but let's go. So it's okay, couples, Aaron. You're my BFF too. Couples, couples. <laughs> everybody says I'm single, crashing the party. So can I learn some marriage? All yes, right, come on, come good. on, married people. Let's talk. Let's talk marriage. about it. So let's it might be a little marriage. PG thirteen. PG thirteen ish. We don't believe in rated R. We're not. We're not, we're not doing yeah, all rated R thing. Radar, so, let's do this. Um, have you had to deal with the passing of, how do you have to deal with the um, passing of family members? How do you uplift your spouse? And, and grieve, grieve as, as well? well. That's a good question, babe, because you had to deal with that with me. Yeah. I went into a deep depression. Remember that? It was Yeah, tough. so my wife's nephew, yeah. um, father, well, stepfather, well, father, whatever. Yeah. Um, they died, they died like, in a couple of weeks of it each other. It was within two weeks of each other. So yeah. it was very tough. And I mean, you have to be there. You have to be understanding. Um, and you want to you wanna be understanding of what, of what your spouse is going through. It's, uh, yeah. you know, and knowing, you know, I can, be, I can be very empathetic. I can try as much as I possibly can to put myself in my spouse's shoes and also they only can see to recognize things. that they are single. That's because your phone is not, is not right. See, she's over to talk about me. I think just but her you, phone wasn't right. um, watch it. <laughs> so I think him just being there helped and just being that voice and not trying, trying to force me to get over it and letting me go through my healing, grieving process. Yeah, because my wife and I, we grieve differently. And I had to understand yeah. that we grieve differently. Yeah. I grieve where I'm like, all right, well, you know, they're dead. And there's nothing we can do about it. But my wife, she grieves because, I mean, it, it, she feels it. And I understand yeah. that. So, I mean. Yeah, that was helpful, I think, to praise us. Praise the Lord. Yeah. My husband and I get questions all the time about why we haven't had kids yet. Oh, my goodness. That is oh, a that's big like one. the worst. Did you ever deal with that? If so, how did you respond gracefully? That's right. Like that word, gracefully. Isn't that word like it's so perfect? How did you respond gracefully? We did. We got that question. 
a lot like why aren't you having kids y'all been married now because yeah you know the crazy it's like when you're when you're single people always ask when are you getting married and then when you finally get married people ask well when are you going to have kids and then when you have your first kid everybody asks you when is number yeah. two then when you have your second kid people are going to ask you when is number three and most times you got to tell people to get out of your uterus and then when you have two and you have a boy girl they're like well you're done now right yeah. like I had a pregnancy scare and I called one of my friends and was telling them and they were like, oh my gosh, you're having more? What is wrong with you? And I'm just like, that's crazy. Like, this is a child. So the thing is this, you have to be on the same page with your spouse. If you guys are on the same page and you have understanding, then it's nobody else's business what you decide to do. So just say, you know, in due time, in due season, we'll have a baby. My mom said something really sweet that I thought um, the other day. I forgot to tell you about it, but she wasn't able to have children for t 13 years. She got married young and she had my brother when she was 33, but she got married really young and she tried for all those years to have children. So she had five adopted children before she actually gave birth. So um, she said, she said something to me. She said, Heather, you know, if I had it my way, I would have birthed all my children, but God had other plans and I had to take um, the child as God offered it to me. And she believes that, I mean, obviously it was the Lord and his hand was on her. But um, that's why she adopted so many of us. Because in her mind, she had, you know, I'm just going to give birth to a bunch of kids. But instead, God said, I'm going to give you your one and then, you know, adopt, which is still family. So, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, ultimately, gracefully, you just tell people, hey, you know what? We're not at that place yet. And we're yeah. going to believe it in God's timing. I think that's how we responded many times. Yeah. It's like, you know, in God's timing, God's timing is perfect. We'll have kids. Because a lot of times when people ask those questions, they're, they're very insensitive to some married yeah. couples because they're trying to have kids. They're actively yeah. trying. And it's not like I don't want to. It's just that I have not been able to conceive or a child. Or you had like a miscarriage. Like I had a miscarriage and people didn't know. They were asking me when, I'm ha when am I getting pregnant? And they don't know that we had just gone through a miscarriage. Yeah. So it was so insensitive. So if you're watching right now, like, don't, you know, don't ask that question. Unless you're like really close and that person's like your best friend or sister. But don't put that pressure on somebody because they might be going through a hard time and you don't know that they had a loss of a child. So just be more understanding if you can. Yeah. Somebody said, how do you address non-supportive in-laws? Oh, luckily we haven't had to go through that. That's because um, we get tested with the rest of the world. That is <laughs> God true. gave us... You just spit on me. Baby, we're well, married. I mean, you got to spit on I me. I can spit on you as much as I want to, Pastor. Oh, Lord, here we go. <laughs> we got two kids. We got two kids. Keep okay. your spit to yourself. No, I'm just... No, okay. Non-supportive in-laws. Tip... Uh, you know, ultimately, number one, in-laws... In-laws should never come in to disrupt the peace of your household. Amen. Sometimes we always hear that, you know, in-laws become a big piece of the house because... Uh, because sometimes married couples live with their in-laws and in that case, yeah. you know, you have to navigate that, you know, very carefully. Yeah. Um, and even if that is the case, you never want to get comfortable living with the in-laws because there needs to be some type of separation there. Now, in, in Eastern culture, I mean, you know, living with your family is very, very, uh, very, very common. Yeah. So with that being said, it's like if 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 you are having those struggles where you're saying my, my in-laws are not supportive or my in-laws are jumping into yeah. arguments or my in-laws are trying to make it seem like, you know, the, like, like your spouse is always right because they're always on their side. You have to come together as a team and realize that in, in marriage, it's about fighting together yeah. and not fighting each other. And anybody who comes to separate your union, I don't want to necessarily call them an enemy, but it's somebody you need to keep at bay because it's not somebody who's coming in, um, to really, to really bring peace between the two of you. Amen. No, I agree. Um, the thing about this is I've learned that if you don't set in-laws straight... In the beginning. In the beginning, they're going to continue to try to influence your marriage and tell you what to do and tell you how to raise your kids and tell you how to be married. So um, just make sure you guard your marriage. The Bible says that when you get married, you leave your family and you cleave to your spouse. So this is my new family. So if my family does not like or does not agree with my husband, then as much as I love them, I have to set them straight and let them know that like this is my family. Exactly. Amen. I'm I'm the family now. So I mean, that's it's just something he's, you have to let them the know. Baby's daddy. Some some you have to let people know, and 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 sometimes it's, it's sometimes it Healthy hurts. Healthy boundaries. It hurts for it hurts for family to hear that because family thinks like when you tell them that they think, 
oh man, you, don't you try, me. you don't love me anymore. Yeah. All the things I've done for you, and I was there for you through all of this. And it's like I know you have been, but the Bible is very clear that when I left my mother and my father, and I, I I'm, I'm to cleave to my wife, and we're to be joined together cleave as one. To me, and I can't cleave when I'm still <laughs> trying, when you're still trying to hold on to me. And and like when I when I marry a couple, one of the lines that I normally say yeah. is when I tell when I'm speaking to the man, I'm speaking to the groom. I usually tell him. You know, if, um, you know, saying yes to your wife means that you say no to every other woman in the world, including your mother. And typically in all of my wedding ceremonies, I usually hear like, <gasps> because they're like, oh Wait, my goodness. can you not say that for Logan's wedding? I'm going to definitely say that for Logan's wedding. <gasps> Logan promised me that I would always be. <laughs> no, you are, because, you know, the, the mother, the mother is not, she's not the only lady anymore. She's not the first lady. And, yeah. and I'm sorry, but. Before that husband, mama does not come first. His wife comes first. And that's yeah. hard for a lot of mamas it to hear because mama's like, no. That's my because baby. that's my baby and yeah. I know what he likes and no. She don't know. He... Oh, there's a boot camp that his future wife's going to have to go through. Who, Logan? Yes. Well, a mean... whole boot camp. You need to know how to cook him his vegan food and make him his kale chips exactly the way that I make them. He shall live and not die. Hey, you know, I, hey, I, can't, I, can't, even, I can't even say anything because <laughs> Taylor's, Taylor's husband... <laughs> Yeah, brother. Wherever you at out there in the world, get ready. Right. So someone asked a question. They yes. said that what do they, what do, they um, do if they're trying to have children, trying to conceive, but they want to do like IVF and stuff like that to conceive? Well, we, we tried to. Um, we thought we wouldn't be able to conceive after we had, had a miscarriage. And it was like a year no, it was like almost a year of trying. It was almost a year of trying. And we could not get pregnant. I mean, I was tracking the ovulation. And I'd be like, come here right now. It's time. I mean, I was crazy. And it wasn't fun anymore. And it sucked really bad. But I feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, babe. But I feel like if you're led by the Holy Spirit, and that's the avenue that he uses. I mean, we live in a fallen world. Our bodies are no longer perfect. So we live in a fallen world. Is, is God's hand still on that baby? Does he still have a plan in his mother's womb? You know, in our mother's womb, does that child still have a plan? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if God is leading you to do that, then I'm here for it. One of my friends, she had to use something because she would, she never ovulated and she wasn't having regular periods. So she had to take some pills and do some stuff that was really intense, but she did it and she got pregnant right away. Then 11 months later, she gave birth to a second without the medicine so it kind of got her body jump started to say you know we can conceive all is well but um i you know if we would have had to do that i would have um but i also feel like if you're led to adopt here hey i'm here for that yeah i mean at, at the at the at the end of the day you know I'm, i know in the church i know we we like to tell people hey you know you just got to believe god and sometimes believing god is taking the extra measure sometimes it's not saying i don't have faith just because I'm, I'm going to possibly use this other method to, to, uh, to have a baby, I'm going to have them inseminated. I mean, that's not, that's not saying I don't believe God. And I think that, I think that we as preachers have to be very cautious on what we're telling people to just say, hey, you just got to believe God. If God wants you to have a baby, you can have a baby. Yeah. Hey, that could possibly be the case. But you know what? I, 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 believe it. I believe that God gives me provision for food, but that don't mean he's going to put it in my mouth. It's like, you know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes you, we're, we're so... We can be so uh, we can be so heavenly minded. There's nothing wrong with that, but but that we're not we're just not practical. And God gave us he he gave us a sound mind. He gave us bodies to work with, and he also gave us instruments to be able to use. And sometimes yeah. we go a different method, and sometimes our way is not the same way that other people use. And and I just I don't necessarily think there's anything that's um, wrong. that's wrong with that. Yeah. I don't think that you should feel condemned. Because um, there is no condemnation through Jesus Christ. I don't think that you yeah. should be. You should feel condemned because you went another route to to get to get your baby. And you went a very you went a very righteous route. It's you and your husband. Yeah. Uh, the doctor said you couldn't do it. You still have faith. And then here's the blessed thing I love. God creates us in the womb. I still believe that His hand is yeah. on each of us in the womb. womb. The Bible says he, he opens, opens the womb. womb. Yeah. So here's the case. Even if even if even if the baby, if the sperm was placed there, placed there in the egg, then I still believe that God had a hand in creating, in creating that child and creating that being. And as, as the Bible says, you know, children are still a gift from the Lord. So it's still a gift, no matter how you received it, is uh, or received him or he or her, uh, uh, him or her, I, I still believe it's still a gift. You have a good question. Do you always have it together as a married couple or is it normal to have a lot of things happen all 
the time between you two. Sometimes we are good and sometimes we just can't get it together no matter how many times we try. We both serve the Lord and we're working hard to become closer to him. Um, but are these hard times normal? That's a great Ooh. question. I mean, life life happens. Life happens a lot. Yeah. And I, I, I don't... I don't see anywhere in scripture where Jesus where Jesus promises us that every day is just going to be rainbows and sunshines. We're just going to walk through script. We're just going to walk through yeah. tulips, you That's know, real. barefoot. It's like you're going to you're going to go through things. And I, yeah. I believe that when two when two things are coming together, when when you're seeking to bring two things together and you're you're welding something together, it takes friction and sometimes it takes a lot of heat. In order to in order to make sure that those two things can join together, yeah. you, you have to understand that the point of at the point of being married is not just the two of you coming together as one physically. The two of you coming together as one physically, the man being being the being the initiator, the woman being the receiver that they receive, and now you join together as one physically. I believe that being equally yoked means that you come together and you join together spiritually. Yeah. Right? And then there's also a mental joining together. There's also an emotional joining together. So sometimes the friction comes because the two of you are trying to learn how to be on the same page. And as long as you fight together, being on the same page becomes a lot easier. No, I agree. Um, we have to remember that the fights that we're experiencing are spiritual and they're not physical. I remember at last year's marriage retreat, and we do have another one coming up. When is that? Dallas, August. 23rd through 23rd, the 20... 27th. Okay, so we did a session where we talked about this area. And last year, uh, we were in Orlando, right? Uh, I don't remember. My brain shot. Anyways, long story short... Phoenix. We were Phoenix, in Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona Phoenix. last okay. year. That's where we were at Phoenix. So, so d during the marriage retreat last year, I taught on this dream that I had. And it's where my husband and I got in a really big fight that night. And I went to bed mad. You know how you like pull the covers and you're like totally ignoring your spouse. And it's like, I know what the Bible tells me not to go to bed mad, but I'm going to bed mad tonight. And he's going to know that I am so mad at him and I'm not here for this. So I'm like pulling the cover, pulling the cover. I go to sleep and in my dream, um, it's almost like I'm in my room, but I'm awake, but I'm actually sleeping. And I see these little like gremlin like demons running around our bed in circles. And that freaked me out because I was like, God. And I remember talking to the Lord in my dream and I said, Lord, what is that? And he said, those are marriage demons. Those, those, mar those demons are a sign to destroy your marriage here on this earth. And I was like, hold up. You mean to tell me them little gremlins came to ruin my marriage and I gave them an open door and I let them? What we're not going to do is this. So I woke up out of my sleep and I was like, babe, I repent. I'm so sorry. And so it's like I, I realized that there's a, there's a devil that's rowing around that's looking to destroy your life, destroy your marriage, destroy your single life, destroy every area of your life. So for me, realizing that, that the enemy was on the prowl to destroy it, it helped me to get to gain perspective when it came to my marriage. This fight is definitely spiritual and not physical. Yeah. Somebody, somebody had a question right here. It says, I've been married for three years and two babies later, we're having a hard time putting each other first because we're taking care of yeah. the kids. What advice do you have for keeping the spark? Woo. That's a good one. Um, you have to keep each other first. Yeah. You have to. And, in the, in you know, understand that in, in order of priority in the household, it's not necessarily who 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 is valued more, yeah. but just so it is 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 so much. It's just it's just about priority. It's not value. Your kids are still valuable. Your spouse is still valuable, but in terms of everything, I mean, you have to think. You have a responsibility from God to raise your children to a certain age, and then when they, then when they are older, they won't depart from it. But your children one day will split away from you, and then they will start their own family. They will have their own village. They may live in their own foreign land. This is yeah. which where your children will go. You have a responsibility to raise them. But ultimately, when the children leave the house, you're still going to have to live with your spouse. Yeah. And many times what happens, and we see it, you know, as, as a pastor, we'll sit down with, with couples and, you know, they're older. They have kids who are older. They're graduating from high school. And they're mm -hmm. like, you know, we're going to get a divorce because they never took time to care for each other. So now it's like I'm living with a stranger because I put so much energy in caring for my, in caring for my kids. So I know one thing that we do is... Uh, Man, what I do? One thing that we do is um, we have date days. Like today, we on Fridays we used to go out on a on a date. So um, fun. Typically, we I think it's once or twice, at least once a year, we take a couple's trip where it's yeah. just me and my wife. Um, 
we what else do we do we usually do things like you know maybe once a quarter we'll just go out just with ourselves and leave the kids at home overnight or overnight. do staycation or something we're very intentional we communicate also throughout the day i mean we're constantly talking it's not like it's a thing where i'm over here doing my thing and he's over there doing like i over probably over communicate with you but you do the same thing with me the thing is when we first got married my husband didn't talk he just was in this man cave in his heart but now he just and i always joke with him i'm like he don't shut up <laughs> i don't want you to ever but it's funny because now he opens up so much now he talks all the time so it's so cute but but now he's just like a free flowing ship but now we've developed a trust with each other and now i stopped nagging him is it safe to say that i stopped nagging you baby praise the lord i did i stopped nagging because i was like yo that's a grown man like i'm not about to sit up here and slow clap slow clap <laughs> And, and try to tell him what he needs to do Slow and clap. tell him what he don't need Slow to do. Clap. I am That's not going to be that preach. nagging wife. Where, where you are my, crazy. Where is my offering at? Come give it to me, Pastor. I can work for it, Pastor. <laughs> there she go. There she go. <laughs> But I've learned to shut my mouth and that's what really helped I think also in our marriage because we would argue a lot and I would say that he's so wrong and he needs to change and then the Holy Spirit revealed to me that a lot of it was me and it was my big mouth. I was not shutting up. I was not giving my husband an opportunity to grow and develop into the man that God called him to be. What did God show you? Cause you over there shaking your head like it was all me. No, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't all you, but I mean, the, the communication part of it is very serious. And yeah. and going, going back to the original question, you know, how can you make sure that you keep that, you keep that spark, you keep, you keep it fun, you keep it exciting. Remember, go back, it's like, it's almost like what the scripture says, you know, God, return me back to the joy of thy salvation. Yeah. Sometimes you need to return back to the joy of why you got married yeah. and looking at, okay, well, this is the kind of stuff that we used to do. This was, these were some really exciting, fun times that we, what yeah. we used to have. You guys used to, you know, when you were dating, you, you did picnics, you went and you got ice cream. A date doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be expensive. It just means we're yeah. doing something. Yeah. So go return back to that. Just return back to those fun times you had where you just, you just pick the rose out of the garden. Make sure it's your garden. Don't be stealing no roses because that's garden. that ain't god make sure it's yours but you i mean you know do something fun do something <laughs> exciting like go to a game or something just do something where the kids are not there and i think that one i think i think that's something that should be talked about is parent guilt because you feel you feel guilty about leaving your kids it's like oh man i don't really want to leave my kids yeah. and i want to check on my kids and i want to make sure my kids are okay and you just and speaking of kids You need to put on a shirt. It's like child pornography. No, it's not, baby. He's a boy. He's my. What they got to do with it? What they got to do with the price of tea in China? I love you, best friend. Anyway, we're on this. We're on. A, we're, on a, we're on a hangout. Okay, go, 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 play. Can you sit here quietly? You want to go play? He's got your face, baby. <laughs> okay. Somebody said, "Do you ever have a question with likability? Like, did you ever have issues with like not liking each other?" I mean, yeah. We haven't we haven't always liked each other. Can we safe in saying that? Have you always liked oh, me? No. I haven't always liked her. No. No, I think I think that that's Shh, be quiet if you're gonna be in here, remember? Like, yeah. We're in I... mommy's prayer room. What does that mean? You have to be quiet if you're gonna be in here, okay, Buttercup? Why don't you go play? Go play. I mean, you know, this this is how we live our life, so everything everything we do is with family. You go play. Go put on a shirt and go play. Go put on a shirt and go I play. I love you, best friend. Hey, go you go can, play. You can hang out right here. Alright, well just lay right there. Take a nap. Take a nap. Wake up at like eight o'clock tonight. Baby, but huh. I think it's it's fair to say that we didn't always like each other. Yeah. But at the same time, I learned that it's not about like. It's about the unconditional love that I know I must have towards him. So I realized that I started to not like him no, when I began to critique him in my head. And y'all know how we do, ladies. If you could treat, critique everything that you think he needs to do better, then you'll begin to not like him in your head subconsciously. And I knew it was an attack from the enemy. So instead, I would focus on the things that he's good at and what God has called him to do and be. And that really helped me. So I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick, okay, babe? So you can just hang out here. Okay. All right. I can I just keep it. I just, just, yeah, it's fine. One sec. Oh. Oh, so you're turning it off? I don't. I just did the ad break. Oh, okay. All right. Well, cool. Um, I'm still here. So Heather went to the bathroom undetected and here I am. But nevertheless, um, so Logan and I are doing this. So let me see. What are the questions? 
Is there ever a right time to have a child? Did you did you all prepare for your children before conception? We didn't necessarily compare. We didn't. I mean, compare. We didn't actually prepare for them. Um, one thing that we did do, however, we sat down and it was on a uh, it was on a box. So it was a fa- it was the Father's Day before we got married. It's a Father's Day of 2010. My wife got me a Father's Day gift. I wasn't a dad yet, but on the box, we she we did these um, these little figures, these like little stick figures, and the stick figures were they were supposed to represent the children we we're gonna have, and then we prayed over the stick figures. And believe it or not, you know, like we we did a stick figure with uh, it was me, it was Heather, and then we did another stick figure that was Logan. We named him Logan, and we did another stick figure that was Taylor. Then we did oh, another yeah. stick figure, which we're not going to talk about because that wasn't of the Lord, and I think we totally missed God on that one. But we had another stick figure of another child, but blah, 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 blah. That's, that That's what makes me think there might be like... That, it's not, it, was not, it won't be another child. God and I, have already, we already have a consensus on this. But the question was, is, you know, did you prepare for it? It's almost like marriage. It's almost like you can't, yeah. you never really prepare for it. You never really, because you, you, most times you don't know what, what you don't know. We took all these parenting classes at the hospital and we were you know we were like hey we're going to be prepared for it and believe it or not we were we prepared i mean when when, when i think no child is the same when we brought logan home from the hospital i was i was so like i was so confused because i'm like how how does the hospital like how do y'all how do y'all trust me to keep this human (laughs) being alive like y'all didn't give me anything didn't a nurse come home it's like y'all just expect for me to be able to keep this human alive so it was it was a very interesting time so the preparation of it is you don't really prepare. You just, yeah. you believe God and then you're very thankful for, for what he chooses to give you. And you just know no matter, no matter God, no matter, no matter what gift you give me, I want to be thankful. Mm-hmm. I'm going to also make sure I take care of uh, who you give me. All right. Is there so ever a right a time? Is there ever a right time to have a child? No, I don't feel like there's ever a right time. I mean, you can say I don't have enough money. I don't have this. I don't have that. But I know people who, who've never had enough money. And you know what? They make it work. Yeah. They make it work a lot. You'd be surprised what you can do for your child. If that you means sure you need would. to start a garden to feed them, you'll do what you got to do. You'll do it. Oh, Logan's going to the bathroom. Okay. Just like Did he strip down. have to strip it's all fine. the way down. <laughs> Our kid literally just stripped in front. Well, like, what was the question? The question was, what if you never have a sitter? Never have a sitter for what? Oh, for dates, dates and, to be and able stuff to like travel. that. Travel. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. Everything you possibly can have a sitter. Something that something that some of our friends have done with with sitters is they did a they did a nanny share. So this is what they yeah. did. They um they they found a nanny and because they could not you know it's like why pay the nanny yourself? Wash your hands. Why pay the nanny yourself when you could when you could easily um, share the nanny with another couple? So that's what they did. They paid the nanny uh, or the couple shared they. Each pitched in money to like pay for Like $4 the nanny. an hour or yeah. something. They did so, a nanny share. Also, who is in your village? Your church, If I mean, most of our village came from our church, right? Yeah. And so we have a big just network of people from our church that we're connected with that we trust. And so if we ever needed to, you know, like Solomon the other last Friday, he sent us out on a date and he took our kids and we trust him. We spent a lot of time with him. He's the executive pastor at the church. So, and he's also Taylor's godfather. So, good job, baby. And so, um, he's a trusted person. So, I would look, look into your church community. See if something. Also, care.com. You can run people's credit check, background check, everything. You can check their reviews. And if they're good, have them come for a couple hours and pay 12 bucks an hour or something so you can, you know, invest that time in your marriage. It's so needed. It is. It's very much needed. And God will grace you and he will help you because oh, marriage no, no, is God's no, no, idea. No, 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 You reading mommy's new book? What is this kid doing? Hey, I just um, love Somebody it. said, is the marriage retreat still open? The marriage retreat is still open. Yeah. Um, go to lindsayevents.com. I don't know. I think I think we're close to being sold out. Now, listen, our marriage retreat is at the end of August, August the 23rd, I think, to the 28th. Our marriage retreat is very special because it's, yeah. it's literally... 
No, we, we don't we don't take more than 50 couples. The reason being is because we, my wife and I, we like to be hands-on with the couples. We like to sit down, we like to talk to them. And typically at our marriage retreats, they're very young couples. They're, it's couples who have, they either have small children, some of them have no kids, and they may be newly married or something like that. And we have an opportunity to pour into them. Some of them are going through, you know, adulterous situations. We've had couples who bring their divorce paperwork and we're like, okay, it's either this retreat or, or divorce or something like that. Can you just go a little bit? And, and so, you know, it's, oh man. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a very, it's a very fun time. It's going to be in, it's going to be in Dallas. This year's the Dallas the Fort Worth area. What's the website um, for the street? LindsayEvents.com. It's LindsayEvents.com. This is a good question. How did you learn to be friends? I think that's a good one because. Friendship comes over time. Naturally. Yeah. Friendship comes over time. We learned to laugh. And I'll be honest, I think it took us about four years before we started. I think about four years. I've always been, I've, we've always laughed. So maybe three years? Um, or maybe, maybe two. Maybe, maybe it was two. Maybe okay. like two and a half. After two and a half. Yeah, you're right, babe. You're right. After about two and a half years of marriage, we began to just start laughing. And again, I stopped nagging. He stopped nagging me because men can nag too. Amen? Amen. So he stopped nagging me. I stopped nagging him. We began to enjoy and support each other and love on each other and encourage each other. It was so great. So we just started to laugh. So like, for example, throughout the day, if I find funny stuff online, I send it to him and just cry laughing. And then sometimes we respond back and forth with emojis all day long. Like just, and it's, it's the funniest thing, but we, we just enjoy each other. We have fun and we just don't take life so serious. Yeah. So. Uh, the, 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 um, the website is lindsayevents.com. Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, events.com. But you have to, the one next year? You have to make sure you, uh, you, you get your room, huh? What about the one next year? A marriage retreat next year? Nick, I, honestly, I'll be honest with you guys, we may not do this again next year. Sorry. This retreat may be our, may be our last Might for be the our foreseeable last uh, future. So I recommend if you're single, go into the singles, to go into the singles retreat this year yeah. because this may not be done next year. And then next, yeah. and then, Marriage retreat, you get it in now because we may not do this one again. It's a lot and it's very taxing and uh, we just praise the Lord. It's a lot, y'all. It's a, like, it's a lot. People don't understand how much goes into it. Yeah, it's a okay. lot. Okay, um, what if parenting styles are differing and something that you guys can learn? Uh oh. Oh There's my our gosh. Other child. Here's our other child. Hi, Taylor. Benson. Okay, let's have an answer questions before these kids. Right, Logan, Logan, go sit over there. Really go sit over there. Really All right, come on, let's do they this. They had a question about parenting styles being different. Ours are very different. Literally night and day. Come, Taylor, come over here. Go to daddy's side, best friend. Taylor, come mommy on. and daddy are mommy and daddy are preaching. <laughs> mommy or is Taylor preaching? No. Taylor's not preaching. Logan, Logan stop. stop. So our parenting styles are very different. I'm more like the encourager, the nurturer. I probably encourage the kids, would you say, a hundred times a day? Yeah. I do. Everything they Love do, it. sweetheart, Stop. sweetheart, people can't see. They want to see your beautiful face. So I probably encourage the kids like a hundred times a day. I mean, whatever they do, I'm like, good job. I'm like their biggest cheerleader on this planet. Um, and Cornelius. Logan. What about you, baby? I'm about to show you the kind of parent I am <laughs> with this kid. Stop. Logan, don't test daddy, okay, sweetheart? Don't test papa, okay? Nonetheless, um, I'm probably more of the disciplinarian. Um, yeah. You get I, the spoon. Um, I will get the spoon. I believe in the spoon. I use the spoon. I do not believe I do not believe that you can... You want an egg? You want an egg? Go downstairs and ask me. So you, you came all the way up here to ask for an egg? What do you want? So I'm, I'm probably more the disciplinarian where I... Okay, go ask Miss Adrian. All right, go uh, I'm, 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 you <laughs> this is our house. Welcome to our home. <laughs> this, this is our home. This is... Why are you crying? All right, go get Aaron, and then I have Uncle Aaron take you guys to Whole Foods. And you can get candy, and you can crack eggs. Okay, go downstairs. She, wants, she doesn't eat the eggs. She just wants to crack them so we get the really, really cheap one. I can't answer my question. So I'm more of the disciplinarian. And okay, look okay. at this one. Look at, look at her. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. All right. That's what Take baby sister Take with baby you. Take baby sister to with go get, you. Go, go get Aaron. Aaron. Go, you have the key, baby? I don't have the key. 
All right, and go tell Aaron to take you guys to the. I do have the key. I have the key. I have the key. The key is right here. Okay, could you? Send you're, him up you're messing him up with the, the you mess up the book. All right, all right, Taylor. Got, uh, Logan has the key right go there. Logan. Go with go with Logan. Bye -bye. Now don't go anywhere in the. Yo, know, you can't Give start it to Uncle anywhere. Aaron. Give it to Give Uncle, Uncle Aaron, Aaron and, and tell him to take you somewhere. Love you guys. To get some candy. Go get Logan, some candy close the door. Eggs to crack, okay? Close the door, Logan. Okay, help help baby sister, okay? Good job. Bye. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Y'all, that was real. I'm hot. <laughs> Our kids don't care. <laughs> what just know. happened? <laughs> they run our life. <laughs> this is our you life. You just gave your kid a car key. <laughs> I didn't give him the keys. You gave him the keys. I handed them to you. I handed, I handed you the, it to him. He can't start it anyway. Logan, he can't touch Logan's the brake. Logan's pretty responsible though, guys. He he can't he can't he can't start but it anyway. People with kids understand that struggle. Just kids like, don't care about your life. They don't care about your schedule. They don't care about nothing. It's real life. So in the midst of all that, you still have to make time to like. What was the the, the, the thing was about us uh, parenting, parenting style. <laughs> parenting style. You probably saw our parenting styles in action. My wife is like, okay, let's just go get it for you. You can have candy, and I'm more like, you don't need candy. You'll get over it. Life life is life is unfair. No, it's have, like life is about disappointment. Life is about disappointment. You're gonna be disappointed in life. You need to be prepared for it. Life is about frustration. Frustration <laughs> happens. Who cares? Like you'll be frustrated. That's life. You need to learn how to deal with it, learn how to overcome it, and just keep going. Because you have to succeed beyond it. So, life is about frustration. You don't always get the candy you want. And even when you don't get the candy you want, do you cry about it? No. You get up and you do more and you, you, until you can afford to buy the candy yourself. Or, hey, the way I look at it, you do more, so you can be able to, to buy candy for the whole community. Or you can own the candy shop. Boom! Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm not that kind of parent, but I'm, I'm really very, close to it. <laughs> I'm really close nurturing, to it. Very nurturing, very, it's okay. We're going to get to the store. Everything's going to be fine. But I do have my moments. Like last night I did, I didn't snap on Logan, but what he's been doing for the past couple nights lately, I make dinner and then he says he doesn't want what I made. He wants something else. So I make something else and then I make it and he doesn't want that either. So I was like, this is what you're going to eat tonight. That's it, or you're gonna starve. And then he wanted kale chips, and I made kale chips. Yes. Oh, you're sleepy. Sure, I'll cuddle with you. Come here. You hold sleep? on, hold on. Sleep? Where are the keys? You have the keys, to Uncle Aaron. You can't go. Okay. Why can't you go? He said no. He said no. He doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to go. I think so. Miss Adriana just called you, baby. Hey, Miss Adriana, yeah, go, go, just, go just, down. I think they're gonna right. go to the store, sweetheart. Yeah, close the door. Don't let your heart be sad. Or if it is sad, you get over it. Close the door. <laughs> Love you. Okay. Next question. Before this thing kicks me <laughs> off. I know, and then I made kale chips. Hilarious. Okay. Uh, my fi fiance and I are always discussing how we would be as parents. He said, "Oh, okay, that was a question, but no, it's." It's funny. You begin to learn each other. This is, what are, some, um, examples what are some examples of a husband leading the way he is called to lead? I believe that a husband can a husband can help provide vision for the household. Mm -hmm. Husband can also provide purpose. A vision lets me know. It lets me know where we're going as a family. The, he says, this is where we're going. Okay. The, the, um, the, the mission says, this is how we're going to get there. The vision says, this is what our family is supposed to do. And then our mission says, this is how we're going to make sure we accomplish this goal. Like we know that we all have a responsibility to share the gospel. As a family, this is what this vision looks like for us. Now, the mission of that family says that this is specifically how we're going to accomplish that. For our vision, for our family, and, and the mission incorporated along with that, we know that we are purposed to gather people together so they can hear the word of God, mm -hmm. that they can grow through and by the word of God, and ultimately create disciples to go back out into the world to share the gospel. That's that's what we believe we do as a family. That's why we I pastor a church. At the church, that's our mission. Pinky Promise, a women's organization that my wife, my wife leads. Women get together all over the world 
They gather, they hear the word of God, they have fellowship, and they create disciples to do the same thing. The Man Cave Society, an organization that I run, men get, men get together, they hear the word of God, they're encouraged by it, and then they go out into the world. So, and oh, so in, in, all of, in all of everything that we do together, it is, it's about having that, that, that vision and saying, this is the mission, this is how we're gonna to get to that point. And these are the vehicles we're gonna to use to get there. Uh, a leader, and I want you to understand this too before other dude says anything. Leadership is different. Don't ever, don't ever compare your yeah, husband's okay. leadership to another man's. Your husband's yeah. leadership may not look like your pastor's. Your husband's leadership may not look like your father's, and that's okay. Yeah. Leadership does not mean that it has to look a certain way. It has to be a certain way. So, you know, never, never try to pigeonhole it to try to make it seem like he needs to be a certain way. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to look that way. But I believe that in some areas of leadership, he, he can help provide vision. He can help provide a mission. He can help to cultivate in the marriage and saying, this is how we'll, we'll teach the children. This is where we'll go. This is what we'll do. And he can help to oversee many things. That's good, babe. What's the best way to encourage your spouse when trying to love them in their love language? How do you deal with marital disappointments? That's a good one. What is it? Um, how to... So what's the best way to encourage your spouse when trying to love them in their love language? Oh, I need the I need that back, baby. You know what? This. I need the charger. What's the best way to encourage your spouse when trying to love them and in their love language? And what are some uh, how to deal with some marital disappointments? It's a good question. Are you gonna answer that one? Sure. Wait. Sure, I can answer that one. Um, what I have found is that I had to let go of my love language. Not totally let go of it because he still knows very much that I feel most loved with touch. But it's interesting that God paired me with somebody whose love language with touch is a zero. Zero. And then my, my love language is touch and then his main is acts of service and I scored a one. So when, when I say God prepared us like so specially for each other so we can develop and grow and prune and all the good, other good stuff. So what I had to learn to do is have no expectations of him with affection. That might sound crazy, but I felt like if I focused on it so much, oh, it's trying to reconnect. Oh, snap. Oh, it's ending it. Jerks. I'm going to have to start again. <laughs> you just call your Facebook it was a, a jerk. jerk. Facebook is being a jerk right now. I hate when Facebook's being a jerk. I know. But you have, you want to keep going? You can do um, it. Sure. I can, I can keep going because you have a ton of people in there. So, um, what I realized was that, oh, one second. I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, baby? Okay. Just because the person asked on there, they're probably... Still on there? Yeah. That's fine. Marriage. Hang on. Okay. okay. All right. Back in business. Um, but again, because I found that I was focusing so much on love language, I would focus on what I don't think that he is doing right. And then I, I don't know if you were focusing on what I wasn't doing right. Were you? Yeah, I was probably focusing on. Yeah, <clears throat> we probably we, we were probably both doing it. They laughed at me for saying jerk. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so pretty much essentially. I had to lay down my love language when it came to my husband. Because I think sometimes that we can take love languages and use it as a sword to yeah. beat our spouse and tell them, you're not doing this right. You're not loving me according to my love language. You're not doing this, you're not doing that. You know I need to be touched all day and all night. And he's like, you know, yes, good over on. Um, you know I need affection or you know I need you know acts of service so we both kind of laid down our love languages and we graced each other and we just said I'm gonna believe that it's gonna become natural yeah for you to love me I don't when I do premarital I don't include the love languages because I think that for most people uh, they take their love language and they, they, they become great legalists <clears throat> inside yeah. of their marriage and then they bring legalism into it and they say if you yeah. don't if you don't if you do not follow this law yeah. which the law is my love language is touch if you do not touch me then you're breaking the law that means if you're breaking the law mm -hmm. that means that I'm not going to love you the way you should be loved and we're not going to be happy mm -hmm. so instead of doing that one of the things that I stress in premarital I, I stress three very important things grace 
mercy, and unconditional love. Now, the love languages aren't bad, but I do yeah. believe that with the love languages, I can, with the love languages, I can, I can use those to supplement what, to, to supplement what we know. Yeah. I think the love languages are also very important to help us with know ourselves. Like, if I know that my love language is acts of service, that helps me to know me. It doesn't mean that somebody else needs to be, needs to be held responsible to loving me the way I, the way I, the way some test says that I should be loved. Ultimately, I should be focused on not how somebody is loving me, but how I'm loving somebody else. So my exactly. focus should not be my wife is my wife is not doing this because if I just focus on everything she's not doing, I'm going to always be unhappy. Even if she's doing a great job, because typically as beings, we usually focus on the things that we don't like more while we while we kind of push down the things that are really good. So that being said, it's not so much what she's not doing. It's yeah. really looking at it and saying, you know what? I'm going to focus on all the things that I know that she's doing right. But my, my, my big, my, but my big focus is going to be um, really what I'm supposed to be doing to help serve her. So. Amen. That's good. We had a good question up here. Can you give some encouragement to someone who's dealing with an unteachable spouse? Because men tend to be against seeking counsel. At one point, should a wife seek godly, godly counsel if there's issues in their marriage? Say it again. Sorry. Sway. So pretty much she's saying her spouse is unteachable. Should she go and seek counsel herself? If he's unteachable, he's not listening. He's not willing to learn, adjust, grow. I mean... <sighs> It's like, it's that, it's that old scenario of, you know, the ox having to drag the donkey through life. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that you should ever stop growing just because somebody, 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 uh, somebody that you're married to or you're connected to chooses to stop growing. Um, I think that you should, you should continue to keep growing. And I, and here's one thing that I believe. I believe that your number one prayer should be, you know what, God, please please open up the eyes to my spouse yeah. and then also open up mine to allow for me to see myself clearly. Just believe, believe through and by Jesus Christ that this person, that their eyes would be open to the truth and that, yeah. and that the reality of the truth will shine, will shine strong in their hearts. That's, that's, that's the utmost of importance. You know, the, the big thing here is that Jesus Christ has the ability to change anybody. And, uh, and that's what that's what you continue to believe, and that's what you continue to stand on. Why do you have so many spammers? I don't. They know. always come on at the end, you little creepers. Okay, so um, everybody, every, everybody, everybody, on, all these spam people on my Instagram. Let me let me you tell y'all something. Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus Christ <laughs> is your solution to all of your hurt. Amen. It's not it's not going on and saying mean things to people. You know, it's, that, that comes from a place of hurt. It comes from a place of, of disgust with self. It says a lot more about you than it does about the person that you're talking to. So I want you to know, no matter who you are out there, if you just feel hurt, you feel lost, you feel rejected, you feel dejected, you feel broken, you feel alone, you feel isolated, you feel like nobody loves you, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't come from, from you being able to spam other people and try to tell That's the right. people what they are, what, they, what you think they are, saying mean things. People get hurt through life. That doesn't mean you have to hurt other people through them. So you're, you're, the answer that you're looking for is always through Jesus Christ. It's not through, it's not through anything else that you may, that you may assume uh, that it might be. And it's, it's as, as hurt as you are, you will, never, you will never bring happiness to yourself by bringing pain to other people. You That's never right. will. You never will. You never will. And some of you have a lot of pain. Just telling from a lot of your words. It's really bad. It's really bad. But God bless you anyway, and Jesus right. Christ is the answer. With um, two big brands in the house, how do you support each other's ministry? Oh, that's my for us? Yeah. That's a good question. The thing is, well, we're a team. We, yes, we, I believe we have two big brands in our house, but it's like we do everything together. So it's like we're always winning together. Like we don't focus on my brand more than his or his more than mine. We both try to help each other as much, much as we can. Do we not? I mean, everything is like, oh, babe, I'm doing this. You should do this. Or, you know, I'm doing this. And what do you think about this? Would this be good for the men? Stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting married next month, and I was wondering if there was something special that you both did that was special leading up to your wedding day. We, uh, we sat down and we talked about what we were spending. That's very special. Yeah. Cause I can know we're not 
we ain't spending a lot of money. That's the thing. You're, if you're you're getting married, um, <clears throat> don't don't go thinking I'm gonna spend a lot of money on on a big wedding. Yeah. Ultimately, a wedding that a wedding that means you're throwing a party for everybody else. Because most of it you ain't gonna remember anyway. So yeah. it's like you know, really, really know what, really know what you're doing. Uh, with, it, with our Christian faith, we believe that that our wedding is not to give glory to ourselves, but it's to give glory to God. Yeah. And we stand before Him. We want we want for Jesus Christ to be the focal point of the day. That's why it yeah. really grieves me when people say, "This is the bride's day. This is the bride's day." No, every day belongs to the Lord, and it's another day we have an opportunity to glorify Him. So you, it's like. You you want to know that you want to practice that and you want to you want to make sure that you uh, that you also live that and then another thing make sure that you are um, make sure that you're make sure that you're also recognizing that you're not focused on just the wedding day but you're also focused on the one after that so you don't just want to put so much money in just the day that you don't realize what's happening uh, after the wedding day that's very important too how can you continue to honor your spouse when you are frustrated. Frustration happens when expectations are not met. So typically, if you can go back and you can find what you expected out of out of your out of your your spouse, and you know I expected this out of them, but I'm frustrated because I'm not getting it. If you can identify the expectations, clear up the expectations, then it typically can clear up the frustrations. Because most times, what we expect out of our spouse is not biblical anyway. Yeah. We expect something out of them that maybe we picked up from a magazine, you picked up from a yeah. reality TV show, you picked up it from a talk show. And while that may have worked for that person's marriage, yeah. it's not biblical and it won't work for yours because your husband is not that man or your wife is not is not is not your best friend's wife. Your wife is your wife. So yeah. go back, look at your expectations, even if it means practically speaking, you go and you write them down and you say, these are my expectations. And then from there, you go back and you say, you know, let me make sure my expectations are fair so I can, I can be able to respond to them, uh, respond to them accurately. I love that. Um, duh, 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 there was one up here about the marriage retreat. They wanted to know about staying at the Four Seasons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the marriage retreat is is at the uh, is at the Four Seasons, um, the Four Seasons at Las Colinas, August the twenty third, I think through the twenty eighth. So she has to stay there. But I mean, yeah, we 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 do require for all couples to stay at the to stay at the resort. The reason being is because we want you to get the full experience, and yeah. we want you to be there every year. It's we have couples away who try to around. stay at other hotels, and it just it never works out. Yeah. You know, it's like sometimes we're in there late. Sometimes it's just we're having a crying fest because, you know, we're talking about some very intimate things with yeah. couples and you want to be there. And it's you don't want to be there. And then you got to leave and go back. And sometimes a couple spend more because they have to they have to pay to park and then they got to leave from there yeah. and they're paying to the park. It's, it's a lot. So we do exactly. just to make it easier. I know you may not think it is, but to make it easier, we do require for couples to stay. But the marriage retreat is at. You can register at, at lindsayevents.com, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, events.com. We have another one. Um, how do you continue to honor your spouse when you are frustrated? We read that one. Oh, um, I have trust issues with my spouse. What do I do? Have, have trust issues with your spouse. That's big. I had a background of just not trusting guys that I was in a relationship with. When I was single... I would get into these bad relationships and I wouldn't trust them. They wouldn't trust me. They would cheat on me. I would cheat on them back. It was dysfunctional. But what I was doing was I was creating this pattern in my heart of not trusting people. So when I got married, I began to charge my husband for everybody else that hurt me in my past. And I realized that I can't do that. So I had to ask myself, Heather, where are your trust issues stemming from? Um, is it you know, it, it was for me, it was so much deeper and it went and it happened long before I met my husband. So um, I had to really take my trust issues to the Lord and lay him at the feet of the father. I had to say, all right, God, if you call me to this marriage, I'm going to trust you. And if my husband is stupid enough to mess up our marriage, then I declare that you are going to expose it and make it clear. I'm not going to go chasing after him, checking up behind him. I'm going to trust that you're going to work it out. Now, that was like when we first got married. <laughs> so, um, Praise the Lord. But I've learned to trust him and we've developed in that. But I had to lay it at the feet of the father and just trust that he brought me to this marriage. I'm supposed to be in it and that it's going to bring glory to him. Yeah. Trust is, people always say trust is earned, but trust also has to be given. Trust is yeah. one of the most valuable gifts that you can oh, place yeah. in another person's hands. And while 
you know, while the statement may be true that it's earned, it's earned after it's given. You have to first give it, and then the person who has it, then they earn the right to keep it. So you have to be you have to be willing to give it first, and that requires faith. Yeah. What are the, the key... Let's do two more. Okay, that's fine. What are the key things that you pray about? Pray about your husband. Um, some of the key things I pray about him is that he will be led by the Holy Spirit, that God will give him wisdom and insight and direction concerning our ministries, our family, our life. Um, I pray that what God put together, nothing will tear it apart. Um, I'm, I'm also sorry, very... Sorry, all these people are... Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I, think, I think one of the things that I love that she prays about is that I can be very hard on myself. I can be extremely hard on myself. Yeah. And... And sometimes that can weigh me down and take me to a, a very, you know, crazy place of depression. I'm one of those kind of people where <clears throat> I don't count my highs, but I really count my lows. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you all of my failures, but I won't. I don't. I don't remember many of my successes. I don't celebrate successes. Um, before my wife, I never celebrated them because in my mind, we have new books. I'm like, aren't you excited? Oh my gosh, we wrote a book, and he's like. Next yeah. book on next to the book. next one. The next you gotta thing. Stay yeah, conference and I'm coming like, up next week. And, babe. I know. Yeah. Pinky Promise Conference is next week. Man Cave Conference. But we yeah. have, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it, I, I can be very difficult. I can be very hard on yeah, myself. Very hard on yourself. And call it what you want. You can use every religious colloquialism to try to, yeah. to try to brand, brand what that is. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm glad I have a wife who's able to, to just pray for me when I get to a point where I'm like, you know what? I'm just ready to end this whole thing all together. Where he just, I pray that he graces himself and he's not so hard on himself. I'm more graceful towards others than I am to myself. Yeah. But he's a leader and a very strong leader at that. And it's a lot. I have to yeah. oversee a lot. I'm responsible for yeah. a lot. And, you know, granted, I'm, I guess I'm still a young man. I guess you're, you're that, 30. I'm 30 My years old. My baby's 30. So it's like, you know, it's a lot of I responsibility. Got a lot of more years so. with you, baby. Praise the Lord. One more. Um, then we going to go. Um, what, how do you deal with someone Intro that claims they love you, but never want to do anything with you? Like go on, on dates or nice walks to the park. Huh? What is it? How do how you, you deal, deal with, with someone, someone that claims, claims that they love you, but they won't do anything with you? Um, I don't know. What you I think it's clear if they're not interested in pursuing you as a single. Well, I, I think, I think it all depends upon, depends upon what you're doing or what, yeah. what you, what you want them to do. And sometimes, yeah. sometimes it can be, you can be extremely selfish and assuming that they only have to do things that you want them to, that you want them to do for you. Yeah. Sometimes it's yeah. you being able to ask them, what do, what, what do you like? Can I do something that you like? And I know that Something that's helped us in our marriage is when my wife shows interest in mm -hmm. something that I that I like, then yeah. now it prompts me to want to show interest in yeah. what she likes. I don't like anything that comes on HGTV. But when my <laughs> wife is willing to sit down and watch a first 48 show with me, which she doesn't like, but I know if, she yeah. sit, if she's willing to sit there and watch it, I'm like, you know what? Yo, I, I'll, I'll sit here and I'll watch this show you about... you turned on Four about, Weddings about, the other day. I, I turned on Four and Weddings. He was watching Because I was like, look at this, saying, you know. Four, I, I made Four Weddings and Say Yes yeah. to the Dress and all the other mess. <laughs> but it's like, you know, when, when you can... Remember now, in marriage, your goal is to know how you can best serve somebody else. Amen. Not how, not to be focused on how that person can just best serve you. So if you can focus on the right thing, you keep the main thing the main thing, and that's how you keep it. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So we're going to be doing a singles hangout um, again soon. And we'll do marriage. These are fun. You uh, you guys like these? Amen. We're going to try to record them and upload them to our YouTube channel at some point soon. But we just thank you guys for hanging out and tuning in with us. And yeah. And don't forget, if you're married out there, we do have a marriage retreat. Yes. Uh, June, the, I mean, August the 23rd through the 28th is next month. Yes. LindsayEvents.com will be in Dallas, Fort Worth area. Four Seasons at Las Colinas. I'm not sure what the registration looks like, but I would say get it today before it's gone. If you're single, we have a singles retreat in Orlando, Florida, August the 8th through the 13th. We'll be in Orlando, so you have to you have to reserve your room, have to reserve, yeah. get your ticket. Um, you also, what was the other thing? Uh, that was it, baby. You know, we have those. We have the we have a man cave conference next week. My wife Yay, has pinky, pinky promise. promise conference and our new books. Silent seasons, book. trusting God we don't understand. And my book, When God's Hand is on You. 
You can get them on Amazon, Audible, Kindle, Kindle all, iBooks, that good stuff. all that kind of stuff. So God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. And Yay. we will do this again. Just make sure you stay connected to our Instagrams. Yes. And, and we'll our, promote about it. Yes. And our Facebook too. And Facebook. I know there's a lot of stuff. spam. So you could kind of go back and forth. Um, I, know on forth. Fa- <laughs> I know on Facebook, there's not as many spammers. So if you're having issues on Instagram, you can always go to Heather Lindsay's Facebook. Yeah. Love you guys. God bless y'all. And remember, Jesus Christ is Lord. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs>